1-800-987-6541. The Midweek Service Show has started. All right. Uh... A so good day to you wherever you're listening from. My name is Alicia Leldi and this is the Midweek Service Show. Um, so today's episode is exciting. I'm just hanging out with my guys and we're just going to be talking about uh, ladies. Mm-hmm, yeah, these guys hanging out talking about ladies. That doesn't happen on a regular, but we're going to be doing that today and talking about why we play away matches. Why guys generally uh, just go for ladies that are not in their church, or is it even a thing? We're going to talk about that. Is it even a thing? And um, what issues do we have with ladies, uh, Christian or not, in our church or not, and everything? So I'm hanging out with all my friends here. I've got Timmy in the house, and I've got Wally in the house, and we are coming back straight to deal with this issue if if it is an issue at all you know if it's an issue so we're coming back to deal with it but before then we're going on a short break and we'll be playing one of my favorite songs um i won't tell you what it is we're just going to play it and then i will be back the show will kick start this is the midweek service show we are here i'm so excited to be bringing you this episode of the show and don't forget you can follow us on social media at the midweek service or you can mail us at gmail at the midweek service at gmail.com so taking a musical break and we will be right back <laughs> There's a little simple song that me and my daddy used to sing And it goes like this Listen I'm not the Neca Jesus Oh yeah, Kilua I'm not the Neca Jesus Anomneka Jesus by Evans Oboi. Very lovely. Yeah, this is my favorite part. <laughs> All right, so Anomneka there uh, by Evans Oboi. You know, you recently just did a remix. Have you, have you heard it? I haven't. No. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So Timmy has not heard it. So he just did a remix. Not really a remix. He did like a, he redid oh, the song. Okay. I had a few things here and there, but in my mind I was like, the song is not. I mean, it's a very lovely song. Everybody loves the song, but I felt that probably was the wrong timing. It probably could have waited a few more years. It would have made sense if you're doing it in five years or something. But hey, just my thoughts. Still love um, Evan Sogboy and his wife Puris doing very, 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 very wonderful. Yep, wonderful job. couple. <laughs> yeah, very powerful couple. Another couple that have been powerful. Oh, I'm not even going to get there now. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to start looking for trouble, but there are couple Those that could have been powerful. That that somehow are not and the scandals rocks it and everything. Maybe one of these days if I'm powerful enough when I get there, I'll be able to bring the two of them and sit here and say, Let's talk about what happened. I'm 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 praying that this show gets to that level. But now to today's topic. So ladies, first of all, about the ladies. Is it a thing that ladies um go to guys marry or guys sorry? Guys marry ladies outside their local assembly. Is it a thing? Is it something that happens regularly? Uh, well, I really don't think so. I what I tend to hear more is ladies not wanting to have this, that guy in church, precisely because of the whole church setting of everybody. Um, Knowing about the relationship, you understand. Knowing about this is my guy, you understand. So, because uh, at the end of the day, if probably something happens, if everybody in church knows about it, you understand, and they get to probably separate if things don't work out between them, it, the whole church will still know about it, and it starts people start saying stuff, saying stuff precisely, you understand. So. Uh, I know it's more with the ladies than the guys, but some guys tend to also do that, not want to have their lady in church too. But could that, could that not be could that don't be the resultant effect in that because the ladies don't want to date guys or marry now guys in the local assembly, so they are refusing them, and so the guys are now going out. <laughs> well, what was your take on this? First of all, is it a thing? Well, for me, I think it's neither here nor there. I think it's just um, something that, yeah, it does happen, but it's not um, something that I would say is like the norm. Norm, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so because you also, I also know that you have churches that, you know, are so particular about they are singles getting married to each other and not to any other person outside their own denomination so they have like this unwritten code or rule that okay so you have to get married to someone from this uh, denomination so that one that is also a factor that is also there so if you're saying okay people go out yeah and i also yeah maybe in cases where maybe the, the people attend their parents' church and mm-hmm. maybe it's not really their church so they are not really feeling the kind of people they are connecting with there so they want to connect with their own kind of people you know out there so, I so think if I'm a youth I'm a young guy and I want to marry I probably will not want examples no no with you know just examples here so if I want to marry now and my and I'm going to an Anglican church with my parents I'd rather want to get married and say they start exactly so because that's the kind of person you think okay you can really connect okay. with you, you get you're just doing the Anglican because of you know maybe out of respect for, for your, your parents. parents and probably are still under their roof or something you get so but I also think there's also another side of you know people wanting to get married to people who they really share core Same doctrine with exactly doctrines because Same I idea think with yes because that's very key because the thing is yes regardless of the fact that we are all Christians as in there are you know one or two things like that cause that cause issues in marriages like okay so let me just give a very simple example like maybe tying of the head with scarf or not wearing earrings or not so that's like those are doctrinal issues they are not really seen or no seen issues you get so stuff like that also comes into play where people want to say okay no i have to be able to marry someone that we share the same so 
it will reduce you know what you call it now it will reduce the level of um, headache that will go into resolving conflicts that shouldn't have been there in the first place so uh, I don't know. Okay, so, sorry um, in addition to what you said uh, in that kind of situation it just makes like a whole lot of things easy you understand based on the fact that to an extent is a problem when the two parties have different ideas about stuff and mm-hmm. they feel this is my opinion the other person feels this is the person's opinion and you understand but so can I, can I not be dating somebody in my church and still have a different opinion from them of course definitely yes, you, can. you can but, but it will be know, limited yeah it's, there, there are no two individuals in this world that will have the same opinion on everything regardless of whether you're in the same church or not but if you're in the same church it, it tends to reduce things that you would probably argue about because you get to get the same sermon, sermon yeah. obviously you guys agree to a large extent That's with what you're listening to you get you get you get to feed on the same kind of diet so basically so, so the ladies can boil down to me not wanting to leave my church when i get married exactly and how much do i don't i don't know maybe maybe when the ladies are doing their show they can talk about how much church is is a factor in who they choose who they're getting married to but uh well have you ever had a relationship with someone in, your, in the same local assembly before yes i have okay to me have you yes i have okay i also have so <laughs> we can be sharing we can be sharing experiences but for me when that was happening i didn't really i don't know there wasn't really a sense of privacy Oh, because maybe one or two people knew and we had a lot of you know common friends together who knew and so the moment i came and i didn't hug a certain sister the way i was supposed to hug or i didn't i, I hugged somebody better than the way i hugged her which you know i could have just done you know didn't see any big deal but i had people come to me and say what happened now? Did both of you fighting? You did. You, did you see the way you hugged their sister? You know, ah, and you're hugging somebody else better. I had issues there. I had little issues there, and I, for me, it was it was me first of all saying, "Can we just keep it very low, low profile? I don't, I don't really, I don't want to come to Quarry's house, or maybe our people are, or maybe we just come together at some time and people are like, okay, they went on a date. I like." As jovial as I am, as much as I like to, you know, play and exchange banters with sisters or everybody in the choir, I just feel there's some certain level of privacy that was needed. And and it wasn't it wasn't there. So I wasn't really enjoying that. And there were a lot of other issues, but right now the truth of the matter is I might actually if we know is actually one of the things I consider now and I think hard about it so if I'm going to go into a relationship with somebody in my local accent I have to think about it I would actually prefer somebody outside for a lot of old reasons anyway <laughs> which I might share later but personally I just think you know let's so your, your, yours was a quiet thing yeah it was it was it was a quiet thing we, we right. were, were the same quiet show I'm listening to this <laughs> but we're still friends, funny. We're still very good friends, you know. We still roll and all of that. We still roll and all of that. Maybe someday it will become a night a thing again if we're able to deal with some issues and go past it. But me, I felt like I was under a lot of microscope, and because we're even in the same choir, um, it was it was. So the lead, some leaders will have to know so that you know because of any issues, and of course that helped because. If ever there was an issue, I knew that there were people who could always go back to and say, this is what is happening. And say, so what can we do and everything. But at the same time, it still felt like it was under a microscope. And so I had to tread um, like I was walking on glass at some point. I don't know. Maybe it's me that wasn't doing something. So right. <laughs> but what was your experience like, Tim? Uh, well, I, I think it's normal for uh for you to when you have a relationship in church it's it's normal for people to always know no matter how you want to hide it certain set of people will still know and that depends on how you are able to control it that a whole lot of people don't know about it you understand so well, well for me it was I, I think i'm more of a person i'm more of 
I tend to be indifferent about quite a lot of stuff. About quite a lot of stuff because uh, I feel, in as much as yes, we we are different personalities, we should still be able to agree on quite a lot of stuff. So most times, I tend to always ask you that, okay, what do you want on this? What do you want on this? And if you want, if you don't want people in church to know, it's fine by me. If you want people in church to know, it's fine by me. It's not like I'm here to play. You understand? So I'm here for this. I'm serious about this. So if a lot of people know, fine. If nobody knows, fine. So for me, it was quite an experience because she said she didn't want like a lot of people to know about it i would have liked that because my i i she didn't say so but i felt like at a point she was thinking i was going to mess around because i wanted I yeah they always think that people to know so they always think that. was like okay are you are you very serious about it? like dude why the same choir why would i be playing about such a thing and i understand those insecurities obviously i do understood where this person was coming from but i, I also felt like let it be private you know if i'm probably married i'm not I'm probably not the type that I want to, you know, show love affections in public. Let it be our thing. Let us go out elsewhere and do it. Not in the eyes of everybody we see every other day. I just feel, think it's necessary. Maybe unnecessary. Maybe I'm wrong though, but well, I, I I don't I don't think you're wrong actually. But in in my own experience, uh, she didn't want a lot of people to know. Okay. Fine, and the best way for you to avoid that, for for you to avoid a lot of people knowing, is try to create less contact. And when it happened, when we started, I was trying my possible best not to always hang around too much, because even from that, a lot of people would try to figure that okay, something happened between these two, like. Every, whenever service ends they always tend to sit down with each other and talk and converse and most times they always with each other you understand so I was trying possible best like to re- reduce like just make the contact and the association the conversations normal and all that but she was reading it in a different way because at times when we tend to see she tells me okay you didn't come to hug me in church and I'm like okay how <laughs> okay we are done after service she's going home you didn't see me off to the car you didn't you didn't you know you understand so it was i'm like okay what do you want me to do we are out of the church and you say you don't want a lot of people to know and we are in church and you're complaining i, I don't come to meet you i don't come exactly. to argue i don't see you off to the extent that there's a lot point we're done with um, wednesday service and everybody does normal chit chat after service and everybody were just mingling and all that and all that and she was about to leave and I'm like, no, just let her go in this time. So she had gotten downstairs from church. She was like outside the gate already. Much later, I was like, let me just go and meet her in this time. So I got to her and daddy, I, I walked out to the bus stop. And immediately I got to her, the next thing she said was that uh, if I didn't come to meet her, she probably won't talk to me for like three weeks. She was, <laughs> she was serious about it. Like, I was shocked because, you know, I, I, you were in church I, and you say you want this and I'm trying to shuffle in between of okay I, I don't step on your toes and I don't allow a lot of people to know about this because this is what you want and on me staying back you feel that okay if I, was, if I don't come to meet you you'd not talk to me for three weeks you get angry I don't get I don't get where that is coming from like so what do you want? I have to ask the question that like what do you really want about this? For like, me for, for me what happened is maybe I didn't handle it well. Uh but for me we were friends before and so when this when 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 we became an item, I just sort of pulled back. For me, for me it was just being me. I don't know, it wasn't guilty conscience, really, it wasn't because <laughs> some people already knew. But I just kind of pulled back and like maybe in my trying to be protected and they don't don't make this thing too obvious i just kind of pulled back so i won't greet her like i would normally whenever we're in in the midst of friends and everything and some people actually noticed and came to me like what's wrong you are not even greeting this person the way like okay so is it because you know that is why you noticed you know but <laughs> i i started out like that and it took a while for me to adjust and like okay there's no issue but still there was issues here and there and you know it was it was it wasn't easy for me it was it wasn't easy for me church church relationship is never easy okay so 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 i have a question so this 
because I know okay so it has to, I know it has to some extent it has to with personalities mm-hmm. like you don't want people to get into your business and all of that but also is it a church thing that you don't want people to know you're in a relationship so because I'm thinking in my head if you were in school or if you were in an environment outside church say you guys are co-workers or something would you be saying you don't want people to know that you guys are in a relationship or is it also because of the fear that if this goes south and it doesn't end up in marriage eventually what would people see or something so i'm, I'm not I, okay so i'm saying apart from um the church no 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 apart from the fact that based on people's personalities they might not want to is it actually a church thing also or i don't get or is it a fear of the relationship not heading to the I altar think, or something I, th- I think it's part of the fear because it's a church thing first of all i think because it's a church thing it is expected that before the both of you started you have prayed about it and so it must be the one that will lead you to no there is a misconception yeah. i understand but but there's, also, well, there's, there's actually there, there's no there, there's no that because it's this church okay both but, of you must have prayed very well about it before you even started in the first day so yeah. when you're starting but, i think there's that pressure of this thing must not break so, so I, there's a little bit of that there and there's that fear so you just you just want to protect it that is the way i see it so yeah, let's let's just, put let's actually put the church old church thing aside actually i still want to hear yeah, well, this story I, though i, I, I think <laughs> it, it is more of the people let's like forget church anybody that knows that you're in a relationship or you have a thing with somebody if anything happens person would definitely want to talk to you about it that okay what's wrong what's happening so it, it's not but, really about but, but, the church thing because if people outside also know they would still do the same thing okay you understand okay. they'll still do the same thing even if it's the off work environment if it's your family if it's just your normal friend they'll still come to you and be like okay alpha what's what's wrong you understand yeah, so but, it's but really that's part of life if it doesn't work out and there are legit reasons for why it didn't work out i think so, there's extra pressure when it comes to church i think that i think that, yeah. that that's where well, work yeah. relationship will understand it, it didn't work out i mean and we'll probably just move on but because it's church there's still that church and so and the funny thing is you probably would not want to date another sister in the same church so that you're not labeled so and there's also that there's also that fear and also i'm th- i'm thinking for what you're saying now is that fear that pressure is self-imposed is not necessarily a reflection of what yeah people will always have their perceptions they will always say stuff but really so what as in as long as you did not like you said um, quite, quite, yeah. a, quite a lot of people don't have that I don't care attitude I know I don't you know so in this society that we are in sorry in mm-hmm. this society that we are in we always we are always worried about what the next person will say it's just normal you understand because you you don't yeah. you don't want to create a bad impression you don't want to give people bad ideas about you understand about everything that goes but, but it also Will depends you? on what happened it, what, it, it, what, it's not like maybe you cheated on the person it's not like maybe there was you know something bad that happened it just didn't work as in it just didn't work out okay I, 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 I want to give you I want to give you like example. he said he's still good friends to, with uh, yeah, his ex so yeah. it just didn't I, work I, out I am so still good friends with the fallout with doesn't necessarily have to be something bad that happened I, I want I want to it give you. It could just be something that you guys sorry. It could just be something that you guys found out that you couldn't work out, and the best option was just to let so it maybe go. Maybe a genotype. Or, that would have been an easy excuse. I'm still coming to the breakups and how that happened. I still want to hear all this story, but let's hear. So, for example. um, when might happen? Like after the whole breakup and all that, there was somebody in church that knew about it, and she. Earlier on in the whole stuff in your relationship, she reached out to me and she was like okay what's up like what's up with the two of you and i'm like okay, yes we have a thing and all that the next thing she asked was uh does pastor know about it and i'm like no he doesn't know about it and she was like okay, i need to tell him about it much later pastor called us normal definitely he knew but he just wanted to like get it out of our mouth for, for us to tell him you understand so we had a meeting with him and you know he spoke to us and we told him okay yes this is what is up and all that and we ended so 
after the whole thing went out and you know we had to separate and all that on this lady that reached out to me when she finding out she, mm. the next thing she said was it was your fault abby because mm-hmm. she automatically believed that As you, it was me that caused the whole breakup okay so when she said that what did you say to her i told her that no it wasn't me so i, I and i explained to her that, that but on a norm on a norm because of that the way people she, will react she came a lot of people wouldn't have come i would still have assumed yeah she came because of her closeness to him she came people probably wouldn't have come so that, that's me that's not how you want to say it people are like the that's external people, people would influence will, people will, think, people will, will have their perceptions as always people will always think what they want to think not really. everybody is as bold some of us just I, want to stay out of all that church scandal you just want to come and worship god it's not it is not a scandal or drama it's not a scandal or drama or drama it hasn't gone to that level <laughs> we probably just want to stay out of it we, we, we don't want and i know i can be some some somebody like that i don't any drama i do not want it. i do not want to be part of it i do not even want people to be talking about a certain issue that happened and my name is mentioned somewhere in the mix i don't want it i don't want it i try to distance myself a lot so maybe that is explaining why i was very careful and i wanted everything just on that app so your own story how did it go? mine wasn't even it was, as in this thing even occurred to me it was not even a thing like people like really was my business as in i don't i don't get like so and i I didn't also get that uh, what you call it. I didn't get that um, impression from her to like she not wanting to. But obviously she was like the reserved type and all of that. She's not the kind that has too many friends and all those. So it was more. Most times it was just me and her. Like okay, maybe after service, you know, we hook up. We just obviously a few people have been seeing us together and yeah they, they are, you just are a guy half an half an. i'll just <laughs> smile i wouldn't i i didn't have to say so, yes yeah. or no but Let me i would just smile this guy has some reputation you know the fine boy and all that <laughs> i beg you i beg you i beg you let us hear it i beg I was trying to hook you up with a lady some time ago. You didn't follow up on it. I call, call. The is that, I don't understand. Is that, is that, is that, is that all for conversation here? I don't get. Is that what we are talking about? I remember here? now. I just started to bring it up anyway. But, but you know, so you just didn't. I, so really for me, it wasn't a thing. So, and for, I didn't get that impression from her as well. So as in, okay, so she had an elder brother yeah that she was staying with then uh, you know like it's kind of strict that da, da, da. so one day she said ah, the, the guy saw her with me blah 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 and he was asking uh, she should have told him that she's, he's my friend da, 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 da. so i i i didn't get that impression from her that like okay so she didn't want people to know or and for me because i liked her and i wanted to get into yeah so the relationship was supposed to get to lead to the altar but eventually yeah. didn't and she was i think she was also mature because right from the start of me going to meet her and you know making my moves she had told me okay these are things that she can't deal with you know she was she knew what she wanted she knew so what she was up. headed so really it wasn't so much of a big deal for me so i don't know all um, right so lastly before we round off this segment uh what was the breakup like well how did the both of you handle it i know funny my breakup wasn't even because of this issue it was for something else something different something and i know that for me it was hard i really don't know for how and how she managed it and everything but i know that for the both of us there was some sort of awkwardness after it took it took it took a few weeks for things to just stabilize and also just, it took in fact a month or more for things to just stabilize and we to just come back and say okay we're friends but for me it was hard it was it was very very hard and i just crawled back into my shell and i went to deal with it and i just came back out again i didn't ask i didn't really bother to know how she dealt with hers or what happened or what didn't happen but for me it was hard and i probably do not want to try it again in church probably maybe if something happens me and her get back together or but i am I'm, and i'm saying honestly i am actually not sure 
I want to do it again in the same church, in the same choir, let alone the same church. Because, number one, the label, I, I don't want to, so he's done this one. He's fine, fine. People will talk and go in sampling. <laughs> sampling. I'm very, very scared of that label because people will not understand. They just assume, so you're sampling, this isn't good for you. But, but the thing is, apart from relationships, other things you get involved with, people would always talk. So if you are always too conscious of what people will say, guy, you won't do a lot of things in this life. Oh. You won't be great. <laughs> As, okay. Not always conscious, but at least, you know, you, you, you just want, there are some certain labels you just don't want associated with you. I, I just, I do, so that I would not even want to give you the excuse of talking about it. Because if, if that had happened, maybe I went to a second, it didn't happen, I went to a third, it, it, no, it didn't happen, like, okay, maybe it's me, something is wrong with it. Even if it is not me, even if it is them, nobody will see it that way. So for me, I did it, I probably will not try it. So, uh, Timmy, how's the breakup and would you try it again, if you... Oh, uh, well, it was... <laughs> it, was a very, it was a very funny one, because... Uh, how would I say it? It, it was tch, why we broke up was, if you think about it, is not supposed to really be an issue, but it became an issue. Hmm. So uh, I found out that over being together for like a year, we you you don't know where this is headed. But is that not supposed to be from you? Weren't you the ones to define the relationship? And chart the course and say, what are we? Are we pencils in the hands of the creator? Or are we, <laughs> what if, exactly if, are we? If it was the early stage, when are we going to marry? <laughs> if it was the early stage, you would have said, okay, it's fine. But at, at, at that point, you should already have a direction. Hmm. You get, even though at the end of the day it might not lead, but you know that okay, this person is with me and we are in this together. Now, when they ask you the question of okay, why do you think this is added, and your reply is you don't know. How so do you, you reply? She asked. She her, no. You ask and she. I replied. didn't ask her. Well, when we had the meeting with Pastor, that he asked her. He asked me first. I said, he asked her, and that was her reply. And. On getting that reply, I just had this. Okay. So it sounds like you guys didn't even have that conversation before going to see the pastor. As in, you've never had that conversation of where it was much later when we talked and all that. Like it was a thing of uh, she's taking it a step at a time after one year. I I think it's possible. I think it's what don't, don't, don't hug me. I mean, you guys need to see the look is shooting me now. I think I think it's possible in the sense that maybe she just wasn't ready for marriage. No, I, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm not talking about marriage. marriage. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about marriage because definitely at that point, I, I definitely I'm not I'm not ready to marry. I've not I've not gotten to that point where I said okay, yes, I'm ready for marriage. And she herself, she she has not gotten to that point. You understand? We are still in the process of getting ourselves right, our lives right. You understand? So, but we are supposed to do this together. And so wasn't she wasn't she then right when she said she didn't know? She just was taking it. Mm, yeah, time. because that's what I'm hearing right. from you too. No, because you, you're saying you're not, you are not ready for marriage. Yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about marriage. Mm. But you should just have a direction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, with that reply, you're practically just saying that you are you're just doing it just for doing sake. Okay. So what are you expecting her to say at that point? That okay. Yes, we are in this together, and we hope that this is going to get. To that so, stage, okay. you understand? Not you don't. You don't know is is mm. is a very wrong. That she, and she sure. don't see it are in the future. Are you, whether I foul are, you, are you sure? Even though it was going to be far, at least you you tend to see something after you get to spend quite a number of time together. Are you, are you sure it wasn't based on the feedback she was getting from you? Nope. Or the vibe she was getting nope. from you? Why I said that is because she's that kind of person that if she gets a feedback, she would talk. She would tell me. Okay. You understand? Like we have a lot of conversations and she says as she feels. If she tells me something and I probably don't do it, she tells me that she she, she actually didn't like the fact that I didn't do it, that I didn't listen to her. So she she's that straightforward person, you understand? Yeah. You understand? Over where well, according to her through our relationship, she really 
wasn't that kind of person but because of the way the approach i had to it, the approach i had to our relationship she was able to open up a whole lot like a whole lot like we, we talked about quite a lot of stuff mm. you understand so if we have spoken about quite a lot of stuff even to our families even to deep stuff that we we're not supposed to talk about then why we sh- should should she be on the level of you don't know you don't when they know. ask you that question Probably, probably was the state of mind for her. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm just making excuses. But how was the breakup? How did you deal with it? How did she deal with it? Uh, well, she was. And you know the funny thing, when when the whole this I don't know thing happened, we actually did not break up at that moment. We broke up like three or four months later. Okay. Well, it seemed like the breakup started at that point. At that point, because <laughs> because <laughs> even even as at then we didn't we didn't have the conversation after that. Even though I brought it up, but we still did not have the conversation about that. So in my head, I'm like, okay, what's the point of me being in this? To be to be honest, to be honest, my Sundays all almost all through that year was I couldn't do anything. Cause almost every Sunday I'm always with her after seven. Like probably go out. She probably comes to my place or probably I probably. Now I was actually doing stuff. something now. You understand? <laughs> no, but but I, I mean I get, like I get, I'm I'm <laughs> you, you get so it it if I could give that amount of time to this and, and to be honest to be honest, I can practically count the amount of time she has been to my house. Okay, I'm not even going to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to tell you like the like. I'm not trying to explain. So like, you're feeling the like progress, it was one sided. So so it, it wasn't like it was one sided. You understand? But even after a whole lot of sacrifice, a whole lot of things we've put in place, if you would say she you don't know where we are going to, I know that yes, you have doubts. You still have doubts because of we've not gotten to that point yet. But we are in the process. So I believe that you should be able to portray it in a way that we are in the process. Because I know, I know that I've had this argument with ladies when I said when I can't. I was in a garden, and they were saying, "You are not sure until that very moment." He says that I'm like, the moment you propose, the guy has locked up. It is you. Why are you not sure at that point? I said, "No, we are not sure until that very moment where he says I do." So, what I want to hear your breakup story, and then we'll go on a break. Do the top three come back and then we'll just talk about ladies in general what they are doing that we don't like but what was your okay so mine was the fact that okay so she was a conservative kind of person yeah so um even though we attended the same kind the same church mm-hmm. yeah but she was quite conservative so for her some things that i did we had some conversations there yeah, so some things that i do okay let me give you an example like wearing she didn't like guys wearing chain and i'm not talking all those rapper chains i'm talking you know just tiny, those chains. tiny chains you wear and she didn't like it she was like oh why would you like they are fine without the chain now you don't need the chain so for me the issue wasn't not wearing the chain the issue was the thinking behind not wearing it you get so for me i knew it was deeper than that. so for me okay so what happened was okay so for like a while i stopped wearing the chain so just to prove a point to her that for me it's not even about the chain or not the chain but then there are other things Mm. that will come up based on tell me that thing you just did you one morning and you decided you needed a stud earring it will be (laughs) so because the kind so the kind of person i am is okay so I think that I okay so I like a bit of style. Okay. So and she's very reserved. So the thing is I'd begin to see that man this thing will it's cause a issue. clash. And also because of okay so we had also also had a conversation about okay so um what's the future going to be like like things you want to be doing because then I was doing a regular 9 to 5 so but I told her that okay so I see myself doing stuff in media and entertainment, yeah. And okay, we're just in and I was giving up. She wasn't someone that wanted to be with that kind of person. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like I said, she's a reserved kind of person. So all those kind of issues. Yeah, so it wasn't working out. 
no, I just saw it wasn't going to. Not yeah. that. I no, just knew that it wasn't, wasn't going, going to work, work out, out based so on. To just so we just had that conversation so that you pulled the plug. Yeah, yeah, we had the conversation. And you pulled the plug. N- with her own approval yeah. and content because we had the conversation i had to be honest with her that okay so this 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 is where i'm headed and okay it was like except if i was going to change myself for her which and you're really not ready to do that so mm. how did you deal with the aftermath of the breakup and all i don't well maybe in the like um first few weeks or something you know of course like someone you've been used to like for a while and you know you feel that that you've been emotionally attached to and everything you feel that kind of okay so this person is we are not that close but there wasn't really hard feelings because once in a while we still talked even after then even later 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 when she was going to get married she called me she told me da 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 you get she's getting married um there was one time did you go for the wedding no I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> why no, why <laughs> no i no 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 maybe I, I i can't remember what happened but it wasn't like i, I yeah. if i wanted to go, okay. I won't go then there was also one point one time that she had a wedding anniversary on facebook and i happy wedding anniversary da 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 she actually sent me a chat on messenger but i didn't see it she now called me like hi what's up that she saw my message that she, she that she's grateful blah blah so eventually there wasn't hard feelings because we just knew that the reason was because we both knew we were convinced it wasn't going to work eventually so there was no point forcing it you get so yeah yeah uh, that, that was a very nice amicable split up for i think for well, mine was just a bit messy. I was somebody calling one meeting and then so and everything. We tried to deal with it. But the bottom line is, we guys also try to deal with stuff like that. Maybe we don't go about moping and crying and everything, but we also have feelings too. Okay, so if you're still listening to us, this is the Midweek Service Show, and I'm here hanging out with my guys, Wale and Tim. And we've just been talking about dating people, uh, dating ladies in the same church as you. It's been a lovely time. We're coming back to talk about the things ladies do that we do not like, but we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we'll run through a top three. Yes, I have a top three list of songs uh, that indig- indigenous Yoruba songs that have been remade and we are loving them all over again. Uh, okay, am I going into that list now? No. No, I'm going to play you something by Lao Lao Lugbenjo, somebody I'm loving at this moment. In fact, it's just the guy for me. Have you heard his overflow? I love that song. It was on repeat sure for about it. four days. But I know it no, does. open up, sorry. I know he does all these Aluju kind of songs. Yeah, Lao Lao Lugbenjo. Lugbenjo. Yeah. Okay. Am I mixing it up? I think I'm mixing it up. <laughs> all right, let's go on a break and I will be back very soon. But this is. I'll, and I'll be back very soon. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Midweek Service Show has started. Big Sammy. We are back. We are back. So I'm going to run through the top ten now. Uh, the top three. Sorry, my top three pick of um, uh, Yoruba songs that were indigenous. You know, we don't even know who sang these songs anymore, but our um, music ministers have remade them, and we are loving those songs all over again. But can any of you guess which song will be on my countdown? Yoruba songs. Yes, Yoruba songs. Popular Yoruba songs. Popular Yoruba songs. Okbe lo kbere. That have been remade. I shall try that. I shall guess. Just yeah, the case. Yeah, something else. I don't know. I, I think I have. I have a feeling that one of the songs will probably be a Tim Godfrey song. Yeah. No, I can't see no. God. Yeah. Well, since you can't no. figure, let me Was help you out with my no. number three song. My number three song is Oluwa Etobi by Talk by Alabi. Okay, so we-
all right that was Olua Tobi by Tokwe Alabi you know you were asking at that point which one is the original and which one is the re- this is the remix yeah but the chorus is actually an old Yoruba song. Mm, Olu, yeah, Tube, yeah, Tube, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, normal choruses that you grew up singing in church. So you know in this media work we do, we hear gist here and there. And, and so the gist is that what have I, do, I don't really know, I have not spoken to either party. But the gist is that when Tokai Labi released this song and it began to trend, it was, it was a big deal. Everybody was just, it was a very big, big deal then. And so Samuel Posu probably liked it and also felt jealous I, I also can do something with it so he went into the studio and started recording his own version immediately and so somebody now told Tokai Labi that Sam is doing a remix already and if this one comes out he probably is going to spend a lot of money promoting it and so your own you know people might not really when they are searching online and everything people might forget that you also have a version or you did the song so she ran and did the video straight and made sure she released the video before Sammy single came out and which got him a bit angry so I hear <laughs> I'm not so sure but I hear, I hear it was an issue then I guess they recorded they resorted it now uh, so also trying to correct the mistake I made they like open up Dunsi Oyekon sorry not Lao Lugbenju Lao Lugbenju is another person I actually really like and I've been listening to a lot of them maybe that's why they mix up you know so we are going to my number two pick, which of course, as expected, is Sami Oposo's version of Ulu Aetobi. But which do you heard the two versions? Which do you like more? I don't think I've heard Sami's version. I don't oh, really? think I've heard his version. But him, have you heard his own version? Yeah. yeah. So which which do you like? I prefer Sami's version. Sorry, maybe because I'm more of this contemporary kind of guy. You understand, and you know when you're having would, the jams and the whole. I'm looking forward group. to listening to it because I'm wondering how Sami would do a Yoruba song better than Talk by Labi. Oh well, let's put your doubts to rest and just play. Clear my doubts. This is what, play. This is what Sami did. So, Wally, you heard the two now. Yeah, the this this <laughs> this this the funkified version. But which yeah. do you prefer, though? I don't know. That. I just think they are both different. So I don't know. Both I, I, right now, I can't say this is the one I prefer. This is cool, also, but I can't tell you this is my this is my pick. I like how you funkified this. That's yeah, I like. I, yeah. I love the this intro. Is, the like intro the is the very nice. You know, you just you just do it. I like it and. I don't know. It's also hard for me to choose because I think the both of them have depth in terms of lyrics and what they did with it and the solos they came I think, up. I think they tend to appeal on different levels. 
to it yeah like you have your appeal to it yeah on different yeah levels. yeah so they are different they, even though it's the same song, song yeah. is is they are like different genres yeah. like that one is like traditional you I'm go school, like that uh, you get <laughs> kind of then this one is for the you know all right so temporary <laughs> people for my number one pick, you're probably not... This is definitely not the season for this song. <laughs> but I love it because I love what they have done with that song. And I love how... Why it's my number one is because of what they have done with the song number one. Number two is because the owner gave the permission and even featured in it. In, in the remix, I think I think it was genius work. I think I just love it. It's not the season, but please excuse me. It's my top three pick. Uh, before Just before I play that, in case you are... One in case you have a favorite song, you also like us to play. Oh, this is the show, you know. Our doors are open. Just send in your request. You can do that on our social media platform. Any one of them, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, we are the midweek service at the midweeks or at midweek service. Or you can just send us a mail at uh, the midweek service show at gmail.com. I will listen and I will grant your request most likely. So, my number one pick now. Is going to be Odun Losokme, the stars version. Alright, so that was Odun Loso Kui by the Day Star Choir. They redid the song and the beginning, you wouldn't have even thought that was the song they were singing. I love what Kick Six did to that song. I love how they brought in the modern, you know, everything I think was just on point. Uh, so it's, so that song that was fading out as our favorite Christmas song here in the West, in Western Nigeria, now became our favorite all over again and we sing it again and again and again and choir sing it. All right, so right now we're going on a short break, albeit very short. And when we come back, we will be talking about single ladies, single Christian ladies. And someone was asking me before the show, um, is there really any difference? So we're going to differentiate. Is there, are there differences between the single ladies out there and the single ladies in the church? And what are they doing that we do not like? This is still the midweek service. You don't touch the dial. It's only going to get more interesting. So right now we're going on a commercial break. And when we come back, we will continue our discussion. Stay tuned. This is the Big Don't touch the dial. Alright, so that was um, Ernie Olan, She Calls Doubt Counts Enough. Very lovely song. The one, two, three thing. Kind of reminds me of Nikki Lyle's one, two, three. <laughs> so, we have been talking just in case you're tuning in. Uh, you can get, um, of course, copies of this same podcast on channels that will be advertised on our social media handle. Don't forget it is Midweek Service, wherever you are on social media. Midweek Service Show. Now, so we're talking about... Um, what has happened in our lives and 
dating people in the same local assembly. Now we're just going to generalize it to all other single ladies out there. First of all, is there a difference? Because we had a little bit of an argument pre-show this morning. Is there is there a difference between single ladies in the church and single ladies out there? As in, I don't. Single ladies in the church are the same single ladies you see outside the church. So. I don't think there's any difference. But if you say, is there a difference between Christian single ladies and maybe single ladies out there? I can agree to that. But saying single ladies in the church, it's still the same people. So that means there are still single ladies in the church that are not Christians necessarily. Most uh, deaf. Most deaf. <laughs> the fact that you are... Definitely. The fact, the fact that you are standing in a garage doesn't make you a car. So it's just the same thing. Doesn't even make you a conductor. A What's the first thing that attracts you to somebody? Uh, is first thing that attracts me to someone is the physical appearance. Like, okay, so do I find this person physically attractive? Okay. One. And in close, um, what you call it now, in close connection to that is the person's dress sense. I like people who have fashion sense, but I'm so not into indecent dressing. When, when I start seeing cleavage, when I start seeing all those unnecessary exposure of skin, no matter how f- attractive I find you, I always know that no, we can't you know, let me just... Okay. We, we can't go down that, that route. Okay, Simi, do you agree? Yes, but uh, most likely I will classify it as sense. <laughs> so, you should have sense. Trust <laughs> me, if you have sense, you you dress decently. It's just normal. If you portray yourself well, if you have the sense to portray yourself well, you you dress very well, you understand? So, it's, it's just... And yeah. that, that also would come to how you talk, you understand? So, it, it still sense. <laughs> Sorry, it's sense. That's the best way I can right. me, I, for, for me, yeah, maybe not dress sense. After, after the looks, immediately, right past after the looks, it has to be the personality for me. Are you the type? I, I like being around it. Are you the type I want to gist with? I like this. It's odd enough. I like this. I know a lot of guys like this and they would not admit No, but you said first thing. First thing. How will you know that that's that is just the kind of person you can just? I can actually, I just said I can, no, I, I can actually even overlook the physical to some extent. To some extent, mm. I have my spec just like every guy does. I can still, but I think I can I still think bend people, my rules a little bit. Is, is I think for most people is, is dress sense. I mean, for, for most people, said, I mean, because me is a, I if think you say dress sense can thing. still be corrected. Just as what you, both of you can still work on. So I might not really dwell on dressing, yeah, really. but your personality. <laughs> how how <laughs> I work on, how I'm am I around you? How do I find myself <laughs> around you? Are you my friend? Do I just want to just? Of course, you? no. Of, you, no, that's a key. That's a key part. So but that's I can, not the first I can thing bend I my rules with with looks a little, a little, and like not so much a little. And I can absolutely overlook dress sense. We will teach ourselves this thing. We will teach ourselves. We will okay. buy clothes for ourselves. <laughs> Just I can't can look like the teacher. Okay, we will be happy. We will be happy. So, ladies here can hear. Good luck to you. Good luck. No, basically. Happy teaching. So, we but the, only, the only thing is quite difficult. It might be difficult for you to be able to t- teach her because this is basically that's something she has adult. grown up with. That's an adult. And I think so she has gotten used to it. I think that's one of the issues that come up later because that is the way that person yeah. is. So, you are not trying to. Now you are trying to fit her into, into your, your own. Yeah. No, it's going to no. I do. I agree. It's going to be a process, and it's going to be well, probably. But it, there must be other things I'm looking at that I'm that's not. And that's if she's about. willing to adapt to your own oh, kind well, of no, style. She has so to be willing. <laughs> you can't say you can't speak <laughs> for can't her. That you can't speak for her. Willing. It has to be within. <laughs> I was very happy. I was very impressed when not too long ago, um, Pastor Ife and Adi Farasi came out and was talking about dressing. I felt, I mean, if I never loved that woman in my life, which I do, if I've never liked anything about She's her. She's married. I said like get you know you said love. love you said love <laughs> you said love okay we can give you love know about the love of Christ okay, love of Christ thank you in the love of Christ <laughs> you know just get get your minds out of the God <laughs> this is a gospel show. but if I've never if I've never liked her that message really because she was saying the truth and yeah, for somebody like her in a church like that where there's been a lot of 
talk about what they do and what they wear and everything. I felt okay. So those guys doing it are actually just doing it not because of the pastor's consent. It was refreshing for me to hear and and, and I love you. And if you just so you've not heard what she had to I'm say. Coming from her, it makes sense media, because just, just I, I, I like her dressing. Yeah, so she's she beautiful is, she's and she has, point. she's really decent when it comes to dressing. So coming from her is not just the words. We always, you, you, yeah. you know, whenever we do the experience, we always look for her to interview and she's always not. The closest I got to her once was interviewing Pastor Paul himself. I, she, she always just go, go somewhere because, but she's someone, I mean, that will be lovely to interview. So what do ladies do before we round off? What do ladies do that pieces guys off? First what thing do that, they do okay. before, before you come? What do they do that can be a big turn off? Whether you be liking this thing and she does something and it is a turn off. The first thing that comes to mind is all those girls that expose expose cleavage on social media and now be quoting scripture. I don't as in I don't get I don't as in I don't get it. As in is it the scripture you want us to see or how does the, how does it connect? How do mm. you so that one that's the first thing that comes to mind. As in that's a no no for me. As an indecent dressing, but basically. it's surprising how we guys don't like. I mean, the serious-minded guys don't like people that expose ladies that expose. We don't take them seriously, and still, there are still ladies still they feel it's my body. I want to get dressed, and they are looking for people that are that 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 would be a turn off for. I think there's a disconnect somewhere. No, the thing is, the guys that even are attracted by those things are guys that are lost in after those things mm-hmm. and those guys won't necessarily want to get married to those kind of girls because they also see them as not being wife materials but then they look at them as okay something they can play with like a play thing so that's the attraction is lost it's not because okay i want to really make this person my wife so whether they are in the church or not this same rules applies didn't you hear i think this was even part of what pastor if he said if you listen to that thing he said that the guys will come the guys that are attracting with all this kind of dressing will come they will do what you want they want to do and they will leave you I mean, she was apt. I, I wish I could replay. But if you just so you're wondering what Pastor Ifan had different you can just go to our Instagram page. You will see the video. There is every is, is everywhere online. I mean, and she was she was direct. So, Timmy, what's a big turn off for you? Uh, well, for me, I, I think is attitude, like how you are able to accept somebody, accept in the terms that meeting somebody on the first time. Okay. Are you able to converse with the person if you're quite friendly or you have the reaction of please like who are you? Like just like the you smell nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's it, it, it just really shows how low you are of that basically because you don't know who this person is. You understand? at least get to know what the person is offering before you react you understand mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. just saying somebody and you know definitely if the person comes to you and probably approaches you in a bad way definitely you definitely w- would react in that same way you understand but if someone comes to you nice okay hello hi and you give the eyes off or you give the face off okay do I know you before please excuse me um, can you just like get out of my side? The kind of thing you understand. It's it's just a big turn off for me, and I would just you know. And all that can happen in like a minute to me. <laughs> you understand? So I think that's just what I, I don't know. What's a big turn off for me? I think I think for me it's also be attitude, the way you present it. You know, is it just it? You want someone who is friendly, who is down to earth, and who is also factual. So, ladies, you've heard it. Guys do not like and do do not take seriously. Some of us might like, but we do not take seriously girls that you know leave certain parts First of the body exposed. Sense. We do not take you seriously. Everybody wants a virtuous wife. Everybody wants everybody yeah, so wants everybody wife wants material. A wife material. But wife like material one thousand yards. One thousand yards. Old. But wife material is actually really mostly in the character. 
that is when you get to know me i want someone that can be that can be closely with my family because of the kind of family i have i mean there just has to be that click your wife will not bring division into the family i cannot be able to do certain things in the family because i now have a wife fine i'll give her as space respect and everything but you know you have to be able to see my mother as yours and i see yours as mine and all that so uh thank you guys exactly. so much for coming thank you wally thank you to thank me you, thank was you last thank minute you thank you you guys made it it's still the midway service show we're about to draw the curtain for this edition i've had a very lovely time bringing it to us and i hope i know you've enjoyed listening to our stories and our thoughts and the things we have to say i remain Alicia Leo D and don't forget that you can reach us on social media midweek service show on social media on facebook instagram and twitter or you can just send us a mail the midweek service show at gmail.com and we will respond to you follow us like us do everything listen to us mm-hmm. stay your boy till next week when i come your way again you know this is a safe place to talk so if you have anything you want to talk about any issue you think you feel we should talk about or you like to bring to the fore just contact us and we will get to you it's been a lovely edition i have to go now take care next time bye
Thank you.